It's funny because I'm in this mindset now while the band is doing the best it's ever been. When we put out Wayward Fire, our last record, 2011, it's like, okay, you're on tour, you're going, gone. And this time it's like, all right, the record's out, you're not gonna play any shows. We're all a little older and stuff, so. I started surfing a lot, which was a huge change in my life, and then um, that kind of allows you to open up to a lot of different things. I'm actually a very happy person. You know, a lot of bands that inspire me carry a certain darkness to them. And there's a certain edge and, and you know, feeling of, of, of hopelessness, I guess, in a lot of the stuff that I'm drawn to, whether it's, you know, the Smiths, whether it's the Chameleons, whether it's the Smashing Pumpkins. I don't like writing from a happy place. I find it boring and it doesn't do anything for me. Even a lot of the lyrical content on Daydream Forever was about a person in the past, and even though her and I, it's, it's completely gone, it's just a distant memory for me, I still like going back to it to revisit it, because it feels, it, it's what I know. There's enough pop in the world. It's funny, because I'm not a crazy gamer, I don't play a lot of video games, but the only games I've ever have had interest in, as, as an older age, at an older age, have been Grand Theft Auto and FIFA. Uh, the whole Grand Theft Auto thing kind of just happened we were playing uh, at Lollapalooza in 2011 uh, in Chicago and our booking agency was having a big party and we were just hanging out and it was literally just like a tap on the shoulder. So Sleepwalk was one of the songs where we kind of knew. It was, like, it was a very quick thing, it was like four, minute, like four hours in the studio, it was pretty much done. It we knew that like it was going to be the lead single for the record, but we also knew that I had to have the whole Grand Theft Auto thing behind it first. I used to be so obsessed with wanting to sound vintage. I wanted so badly to recreate a certain era, and especially with like with with Wayward Fire, with Daydream Forever, I wanted none of that influence at all. And it's funny because critically, people are still saying it's an '80s. This, I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, I don't, I don't hear any '80s in that in the new record, like at all. I feel like personally my electronic skills, when it comes to electronic music, my, my skills have kind of dissolved in a, in a way. Which is funny because my interest in electronic music has completely dissolved as well. You know, I've, I've even started other musical projects that I'm working on right now where it's just like, I'm staying miles away from the keyboard. We're just plugging guitars and just, you know, writing songs. So I think when it comes to remixing, I do have some stuff to work on. I, I you know, I have a couple of remixes I do need to finish. Um, but kind of just staying away from it. It's like, it's not, it's not my place. You got me, you only got me.